Well, boys, looks like you started the fun without me. You're all sick. Every last one of you. We're going to need a bigger gun. What's the matter? You scared of things that go boom, boom, boom? Gorillas and the uh, feature, Planet of the Apes. Is that, is that how that goes? I believe it's more uh, uh, something like that. I remember something about a Snoop Dogg. Boss Dogg. Ah, oh, shit. Please. My name is Eric. I'm here with Michael. And there's, a, there's an ape-like double feature happening today. <laughs> Humans defending ourselves from invasion or something. We're doing Attack the Block, but also the rise of the planet of the apes. Yeah, that title is one of the it's, it's one of long. the most difficult titles I think you could ever have for a film. Um How many times are you allowed to put of the in your title? <laughs> Rise of the Planet of the Apes is going second, and the reason it's going second is because while I think that Attack the Block works just fine going second and maybe even better, I'm worried that no one will get that far in the title before they pass out. Right. They that's won't true. know we're doing sure. two movies. Rise of the Planet of the Skip. That's what's going to happen. And you can skip. That's the beauty of Double Feature is that uh, we tend to spoil the films. We spoil the fuck out of them. That's kind of our favorite thing to do. We don't give a fuck. Brap, brap, brap. So if you want to just skip right to Rise of the Planet of the Apes, that's why why. we have chapters embedded in our adorable little iTunes feed. Hello, iTunes. Yeah, so we're going to... Scroll and chapter. Yeah, no, everybody gets it. I'm sure people get it. I'm just making sure. 100% 100% confidence <laughs> that people get it. We're going to do Attack the Block first, and uh, and then we're going to do the one with the apes. The monkey one, yeah. Now, as we discussed previously on Double Feature, um, you're fine if you haven't seen the other ape movies. Yeah. That's totally okay. Y- it, you kind of get a little... There's a few little bonuses if you've seen Planet of the Apes. Yeah, that'd be great. If you haven't, uh, it's not a huge deal. So you still have time. There's still time... It was approximately 15 to 20 minutes for you to watch uh, for you to watch the film. Um, Attack the Block we're going to move into right away. So if you haven't seen it, you might want to hit pause or maybe you'll skip and come back uh, somewhere in the future. Before next week. Attack the Block is a Joe Cornish movie. Yeah. I didn't know who this was. Okay. Joe Cornish apparently worked a lot on behind the scenes stuff for Edgar Wright. Factual. Uh, so, I mean, you know, Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz, and uh, we've talked a lot in, about He was involved Edgar with Wright. Scott Pilgrim too, wasn't he? Uh, you know what? I, I don't know that okay. much. I know this is a film from the producers of Hot Fuzz, sure. which they uh, they tout very boldly. Sure. Well, I mean, Nick Frost is in it. It's a sure. very he has a very cameo role. Joe Cornish did some stuff for Little Britain as well. Mm. The uh, the popular BBC comedy series Little Britain. <laughs> the thing that I'm most excited about, uh, wrongfully I would say, excited about is um, you know going through these phases of music. Uh, I know you and I both have sort of a trip hop thing where uh-huh. we forget it exists and it comes right. back around. I do that with big beat stuff yeah. every once in a while. Stuff like The Prodigy, where sure. I forget that it's amazing and then it just shows up and right. kicks ass. The um, the Basement Jack stuff, they do the score for this movie. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, it is. It's all sorts of buzzy and synthy and big beat and it's it's fantastic. Yeah. What's uh, not fantastic is the music within the film, <laughs> which is much different than the score. Are you speaking of Hi Hats' um, upcoming hit single? Yeah, you know, I just think it maybe could use a little bit of tweaking, uh-huh. maybe a dubstep remix. Yeah, that's always the answer. Wub, wub, wub. Dubstep just got 60% heavier. So this movie's kind of a, it's a sci-fi gamer sort of take yeah. on the you know mulberry street right more recently on double feature i guess the assault on precinct 13 yeah type of wow those are good that's a good that what isn't that yeah Yeah, that's a good couple of those um i mean assault on precinct 13 we talked about that being the blueprint for the sure locked down in a bunker uh defending or attacking perhaps the block kind of template for your film a tried and true method that has been uh really given a lot of different variations. None I've ever seen quite like this. Yeah, Attack the Block is really weird because I think the one thing that, the one choice they make 
mm-hmm. that continues to be surprising throughout the film sure is treating the five kids yeah. as adults yeah those kids are adults they have full fledged character bases mm-hmm. everything about them is self driven they're not there as back up for the adult characters right they drive the film themselves so when you see them get violently mutilated yeah it's yeah, still a right. kid getting yeah. his head bitten off it's monsters goring children yeah, yeah exactly great yeah and i have a confession to make to you and uh i say this only in case anybody could perhaps uh sympathize with my situation I think this may be the five most annoying protagonists in really? the history of double feature. I really, really like Moses. I well, think you Moses know by is... the end of the film, and this is uh, weird. I I'm, I'm never going to say I'm not annoyed by the protagonists. <laughs> I don't want to give them that much credit. But I think we start off on the wrong foot. Yeah, I think they're, well, they're robbing this poor sure. woman, and I just hate them. And through the movie, I go, there's nothing this movie can do. I just want to see the children gored, and I want it to be over. And I hate these kids. And by the end, I'm totally there with it. I mean, right. hey, way to go, movie. It's weird to start off the film and, I mean, it's uh, this group of kids somehow manages to make Nick Frost the person you identify most with. Yeah. I don't know how that ever happens in a movie, but especially with his track jacket and long right. stringy yeah. hair. I don't know what the hell. Great personal choices, Mr. Frost. Absolutely. Um, but besides the robbery victim, who... I believe maybe the only good, decent human right. being You're alive. About, uh, Sam, the like yeah. med student grad. Jody Whitaker's uh, okay, character. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she uh and she just has it rough. She has a bad fucking day. She gets <laughs> robbed. She's trapped in the police van. You know, in the beginning I'm feeling uh, some really serious Harry Brown kind yeah, of vibes. Sure. And not just the obvious across the pond thing, but the whole lone woman yeah. group of fucking t- do they have a problem over there with teenage it's, violence? I What's mean, the deal I think, over there? Yeah, I think Harry Brown isn't just a made up plot. I think that's sure. a serious issue. I think that in the lower income, I mean, that's what the block is, right? Sure. For anybody who's not familiar, the the term the block is that's the that's the English term for what we would call a housing project. Uptown? Oh, I mean housing. Yeah. The block is our Cabrini Green. What used to be Cabrini Green, right. anyways. And I now mean, there's a very clean train station and lots of flourishing businesses over there. <laughs> lots of flourishing businesses. Well, so I don't, I mean, we broadcast from uh, probably the most gang-ridden part of the northeast side of Chicago, yeah. which granted is that's the, a, the, the northeast side of Chicago right. is the least gang-ridden part. But um, we're talking now in the center of some fairly hefty gang territory. Sure. Are they all kids? I don't, I don't look at them when we're walking around yeah. here. I just try and get here as fast as possible mm-hmm. and record and then go somewhere else. Uh, are they kids? Are they I, 12? Like- I don't, I think it, it's, I think, I don't know if they are around here. I know that the reason they're so young in the film is first off, Moses is the leader sure. and he's also the one who has no guidance. Right, he right. essentially lives on his own. He has the same bedding from when he was nine. And is 15. Sure. I mean, he he has no moral guidance. He is his own parent. Yeah. And he's probably been the leader of these other youths who have, they show all the varying lifestyles that these kids are growing sure, up in. Sure. Some of them more strict than others. And Well, you get a glimpse when they all dash home to get their weapons. Right, exactly. <laughs> Which is a great uniform uh, 35 seconds in each yeah. household. Check in, see who's yelling at them. Get the weapon. Sure. Check out. Fool grandma. Talk yeah, to mom. Right. Walk the dog. Yeah, and then they all come back together. And it, you're right. It is a, a huge tribute to these characters treating them as adults that they can hang out with Sam's character, and it doesn't feel like someone's babysitting. Right. Besides me, when I meet these kids, I feel right. like I'm babysitting. Yeah. But uh, aside from that, the characters in the film they hang out with Nick Frost. They hang out with Jodie Whittaker. I don't. It, doesn't even phase me yeah. i don't realize these are separate age groups i just exactly. think one is a group of thugs and robbers <laughs> and the other is a poor woman who has uh not even stockholm syndrome she's right. just done with them and has to be there to yeah. survive you mentioned earlier other than sam there are no particularly good 
clans or groups of people. Yeah, we right. have the protagonist group, you know, Moses and Biggs and all their other cute sure. little names. And then there's uh, Gorilla Wolves. Yeah, right. Um, and then there's the cops. Well, and the two young kids as sure. well. Oh, yeah, that's true. There's uh, props the and nine and a half uh, year old kids. Yeah. But you have these gorilla wolves who are obviously the insatiable, hungry beasts that you're running from. Yeah. But you don't hate them the way you hate the police. No. Especially at the end when the police are like, weird. these are poor ruffians, they're criminals. Yeah, because I feel like the police are, you know, when I said Sam was the only decent human being, I feel that way. Even though the police are doing their job. Sure. And really, they're hauling away ruffians right. at the end. But that's for whatever reason, job. they're also being cocks. And yep. I can't figure out why you I You don't like feel them because the protagonists don't like yeah. them. Okay, so I had one other question about it. So Sam's job is to be a nurse or whatever. She's a med student or post-med student. Uh -huh. or the Hippocratic Oath, which yeah. I don't even know if that's global or United sure. States thing. Yeah. Uh, but just to cover our asses here yeah. for international listeners. And I'm kind of curious... I don't know anything about medicine, but let us know, doublefeatureshow at gmail.com, if that is in fact global. Um, it's a sort of ethical oath sure. that doctors take. Does that include patching up your attackers? I mean, if someone was to assault you or rob yeah, you. Yeah, that's a good question, especially you, in an immediate sense. Well, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I guess you would you would want to protect your own health and safety first. But at the point where they're in her apartment or wherever the fuck yeah. they are, and clearly, you know, one has a wound, is she forced by her ethical oath that she has taken to fix that kid up? Or is she just kind of being nice? Do doctors just like to fix people? I, is it good practice for her? Yeah, you know, I I want to say that Does she, she want to save the earth? I mean, what's <laughs> what's going on in her head here? Well, why can't she just save the earth with, starting with the children in England? That's the other thing I want to know <laughs> in the movie is you could save the children in England. It's, you don't have yeah. to waste jet fuel. To get, well, I that's thought fine. that was a brilliant point. But back to the Hippocratic Oath. <laughs> right. Assuming it does exist in England, and I'm going to go on a, out on a limb and say yeah, it does. Yeah, that's fine. I feel like, yeah, she wasn't in danger at that point. She, they, they had, you know, hands off. They weren't, no knives to her throat, no gun to sure. her head. I feel like in that situation, it's probably the ethical thing to at least stop him from bleeding out, right? I don't even know if that's what the Hippocratic Oath covers. It could be something completely different. Under, as far as I know, which is very little, that's not <laughs> which a Which is none, yeah. which is also where I'm at. Good. Um, I feel like... Speculate wildly, please. <laughs> I feel like it does cover that, and she probably should help but i also feel like it's a certain situation where no one would necessarily hold it against her <laughs> right if she weren't to fix them however just because of pest's one little quip i hold her boyfriend accountable for traveling oh, all right. to africa to help children and i can't <laughs> figure out why but it makes so much sense to me that he could be helping these poor children well also he could have been helping her it sure. almost seemed to me like the the subtext there might have been yeah, we robbed you, but where was your boyfriend to yeah. defend you? What a prick. Clearly, he's really at fault here. Yeah. He's, um, he's so I don't know how we're not talking about gorilla wolves this entire time. Yeah. Let's get to that. <laughs> the fucking creature design here. So these things are uh, from space, one. But they're kind of, I don't know if they're spiky or I think fuzzy they're just, they, or... In my head, they're really soft. They're really they're very soft. furry and very Bunch of pets. soft. Yeah. Sure. Why not? They're all black and they have these sonic uh, teeth. glowing. They're sonic teeth. Yeah. yeah. They're sonic dubstep teeth. <laughs> they glow this kind of aqua blue, you know, yeah. pale blue TV light color instead of having eyes that glow. It's right. The teeth that glow. And you don't realize that at first. Sure. And the characters point that out. But as far as design, it's such an interesting choice. You never see this in creature yeah. design ever. It's they're just black. Yeah, they're, and the films at night, dark black creatures at night. I mean, how's that for <laughs> concealing your monster? Yeah. Oh, we're just going to be fighting at night. The whole thing will take place at night, and uh, I don't know. The creatures can be matte black. Right. It's literally hiding your monsters in plain sight, even when they're in a pack, and you just sure. see a room full of gorilla wolves. Sure. You don't see anything. Yeah, you, you see have no blue idea. teeth and blackness. Well, somehow you do still get a sense of how many there are. Sure. 
I don't know how you do that because you can't you can't tell one apart from another. I guess it's the number of sets of teeth. Yeah, it's the it, you count the glowing blue. But there's no texture. There's no. Uh, it's just straight flat blackness, which probably made it really easy to animate and uh, right accomplish all the visual effects. So it's a smart decision. But also, I mean, I'm I guess I'm just amazed that no one's taken this route before yeah it's really it's it's always surprising when you see something that you've never seen before especially on something as off the map as yeah. attack the block yeah here we are this far in we mentioned assault on precinct 13 sure. and the the obvious precursors that have come before this and uh it seems like nobody has thought of this genetic makeup right nobody's thought well let's use really sci-fi creatures in a very, I meant that kind of that techno gaming way. Yeah. It is the sonic teeth and the sci-fi sounds they emanate, almost sure. like some kind of future robots, right? And that what do they call them? The blackest black, yeah. I think is the shade, yeah. which is also the shade of my hair uh-huh. that I get That's is true. blackest yeah. black, and that allows you to not spend any time animating. Don't right. waste any time on that. Sure. I hope none of the animators hear this because they probably labored for it, we're not days. We're not really, knocking days. the result. No, the result is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, the it's important to fantastic. say we're not knocking the result. We're just, we're commenting on the ingenuity. We're not bashing it any more than the characters when they say, uh, you know, if we were making something up, don't you think we'd make up something <laughs> better than aliens? I think that's great too, though. Anytime you have a wild story, yeah, just throw out, uh, come on, if I were going to make something yeah. up, I would not waste time being this creative. Yeah, exactly. Which also reminds me, uh, when you ask the question, where did the creatures come from? Obviously, the government. Clearly, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Clearly that's where the creatures came that. from. Uh, the idea that the government created them, uh, oh, I don't know, to oppress the... Sure. Uh, well, to wipe them out. They've already oppressed them oh, with drugs sure, and guns. Sure, right, right. Well, that was the first they sent drugs, then they sent guns, now they're sending space aliens, <laughs> biological warfare, whatever yeah. they, they think it is. It's good to see how universal conspiracy is right. like that. You know, that same... God, when we fucking talked about loose change and 9-11 conspiracies and... That comes up all the time with JFK and the moon hoax and all that stuff. Things that the United States government is trying to pull the wool over people, which is just complete nonsense, right? right? These are cases where the mainstream story, uh, at least for the most part, is pretty much what fucking happened. Yeah. Lone gunmen and landing on the moon. And Terrorists. Religious uh, fucking nut jobs. Better right? put. But in London, apparently, same problem. The government is trying to keep us down. Yeah. And they're putting fluoride in our drinking water and <laughs> man this is a whole i've been dragging out the same three united states conspiracies yeah. i need to do some research on london-based conspiracies well maybe anaconda malt liquor gives you ooh in no, London. i think that's as still well. that's still united states based although it is another great conspiracy theory <laughs> and one much akin to uh what they're spouting in this movie right but i think the reason that i have such a hard time disagreeing i i disagree and i know that it's an it's a buried joke in the film but moses's intensity throughout the entire movie <laughs> sure, sure. makes it so hard to disagree with any of his decisions yeah right right he is solemn and he has the fucking war scars yeah, on the side of his right face from the beginning he's got your uh your nondescript baseball cap yeah i'm a big fan of that way to, way to go on that movie maybe that's a trend over there sure. you don't know over here, the stupid trend is to leave stickers on your fucking yeah. hat. And I just love... Maybe they matted them all out. Do you think what? that could have been done in post? I don't know. Mat out all the stickers. That's possible. Sorry, you were trying to make an actually valid point. Well, I just... I've seen... This is the second time we, I've watched the film. And yeah. I remember from the first time, the moment, the slow motion running down to Moses's apartment. Yeah. That Badassery. whole fucking... Yeah. Oh After my the God. scene where all of the creatures are obscured in white smoke instead yeah. of yeah. <laughs> obscured in blackness. It's that same tactic. It's just the variation that makes it so fucking cool. Yeah. I just remember adoring Moses just slow motion running down the well, it's hallway. It's his hero moment. Well, yeah. that's another thing from Assault on Precinct 13 is... You know, you have these unlikable characters, sure, and, and they that's get, a big staple of these right. uh, this whole genre. And then they end up getting moments of 
absolute redemption. Yeah, total and glory. That's I mean, that's how the film ends. Moses finally smiles, right? That's sure. That's the beat the film ends on because and you don't realize it until he smiles, but sure. you've never seen it. Yeah. Well it's it's such a side little I mean, it's what you call a smile. Sure. I am smiling. That's the yeah. joke he is there, right? <laughs> So just as a, a quick note wrapping up then, you didn't feel any of that apprehension towards the characters the first time I, you saw them. I think I did the first time. Okay, so that's something that, because I'm thinking now, this was my first time seeing right. this. And I feel like now that I've gotten to the end and know that journey, I could go back and watch it and not spend so much time wanting to sure. see creatures gore children. Right, well, the two That's th- probably not true, but you know what I mean. <laughs> the, the other big thing that I noticed is that the first time I watched the film, it was five ghetto children, and I did. by the <laughs> end, I just didn't know which one was alive and which one was dead. And which one was hiding in a yeah, dumpster exactly. the entire film. But watching it the second time, I totally differentiated. I knew them all by name. Like It, it became a lot clearer who was doing what and why and whether or not parkour, hamster parkour was going to play a part in their role. Hamster parkour. It's really come to this. Uh, let's talk about Planet of the Apes. Rise of the planet. How many apes are going to rise during this planet of the... It depends on where in the fuck, film... I ran out of words. It depends on where in the film you uh, come in at. I want to talk about everything not science related first okay. because I want to talk about science a lot. Big fucking surprise on this show. Uh, John Lithgow. Yeah, we have Trinity. Is <laughs> Thanks for that. Um, Third Rock from the Sun is obviously the more appropriate reference here okay. given the science fiction background. That's true. Uh, not so much the comedic stylings, right. actually. Um, I'm glad people are recognizing that he has some chops yeah. and, you know, he's getting parts and things because I missed him for wherever the fuck he was for a decade or more. Right. Yeah. And he drives one of the, the pieces of science. Um, I, most of the things I want to talk about, I guess, are driven by sure. uh, some kind of treatment of science. The other thing is uh, Redwoods. Yeah. Is amazing. Mm-hmm. Um. I had a chance to film when I was in Cupertino for a little bit of time. I went there and I actually spent uh, two days filming there. My footage doesn't look nearly as good Uh as Planet of the Apes. I wasn't intending to make anything I could show anyone, but now I feel like (laughs) I've spent enough time talking about all this fucking filming I've been doing and not showing anyone. And now it's shown up on the show with Planet of the Apes. Yeah. Uh, I got to cut some of that stuff together. Redwoods and Basin and all that stuff out there. It's real. It's even more spectacular than they have the opportunity to show you sure. uh, in this movie. It has just, man, at night it's fucking creepy and it made me want to make horror films. And <laughs> the road is windy and crazy out there. And these trees are, just, first of all, the ground is red, which right. is weird. Yeah. And then the trees are so tall, they, um, uh, what's the terminology? Blot out the blot sun, out the sun. I believe. Yeah. Our bees will blot out the sun. Yeah. And it gives this great spotlighting to things like, um, you know, I've talked about in the David Fincher movies and in all these movies where we have, you know, narrow pools of light. Usually your lighting outside sucks. It's the sun. That's it. That's all you get. Unless you shoot your movie at night with glowy creatures. (laughs) But even during the day, the trees are so fucking big that it looks like you're in an underground cellar. Right. You just have these dark, you know, areas with just a pool of light coming in out of nowhere. It's fucking gorgeous. So they take advantage of that, but then they also have all this modern, futuristic kind of... Sure. It's a modern glimpse into the future, these scientific right. facilities. And right. Then the... Um, I'm going to call it the ape prison. Yeah. Where we also spend a good section of the film. I think when I saw Rise of the Planet of the Apes, I saw it in the theater. Yeah. I saw it the week it came out. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I wasn't expecting a film as good as this. Yeah, I was surprised by that, um, too. I was expecting, you know, a run-of-the-mill. Uh, we're at the age where Hollywood is just fucking shitting out sequels, prequels, and remakes. Yeah. And I, I think people have been feeling that for 20 or 30 right. years. Though, and but I just I wasn't that. expecting... Planet of the Apes was not something... I, I like the original. We covered it. We talked about it. Mm-hmm. Planet of the Apes was not something I was expecting ever to have something that I felt was sure a film I would show people that I would tout as a wonderful yeah, thing. Yeah. But this film does two things that I think are fucking brilliant great one is the science and we'll get to that 
but two apes. Is that yeah. where you're going? And yeah. It, just the yeah. fucking battle scenes. Sure. The one on the bridge. I just oh, remember yeah. in the theater being this fucking incredible war zone. Oh, for sure. And apes with spears. And sure. The one thing that I recall is I I knew the plot. I knew about the whole Alzheimer's cure mm-hmm. going in, and um, our you know our friend Rob, he was skeptical of this one he had this one qualm with Mm -hmm. the idea of rise of the planet of the apes which is people have guns and the military apes have maybe rocks muscle they had a lot of muscle they're scary and he just kept saying i don't understand why they couldn't have just shot them all and Thanks, then movie. we went into the movie and we Took watched care the of that, film. Didn't we? It answers the question flat yeah. out. You just you you weren't prepared for how advanced these apes sure. were. They were tactical. They were smart. They were tactical. Yeah. And that well, I mean, they use the fucking smart. Yeah. It's not just oh, apes know sure. how to talk to each other and they're mad. Yeah. It's they're fucking tactical. Yeah. They're smart apes. Now. And it, that's the thing. And, and they were underestimated. Yes. And that's what leads to the rise of the planet of the apes. It's a little bit of science and a lot of pride in the ability of mankind. And that just kind of lead. It's it, I believe in eighth grade, it was called hubris. And that led <laughs> sure. to mankind's downfall. Well, for whatever reason, I didn't anticipate actually getting to see that battle. In right. There. It's something that. You know, at the very least, you don't know what that battle would even fucking look like sure. until you see it. How is this movie going to portray that if you're going to see it at all? What does it look like when a bunch of monkeys attack a bunch of humans? <laughs> I mean, we kind of saw stuff like that. In, no, we flat out fucking saw that in Planet of the yeah. Apes, right? Uh, They're riding on horseback, which they have an homage to. Yeah. I mean, there's a ton of homages. They yeah, have right. the, uh, the rocket launch sure. that the Charlton Heston or Mark Wahlberg, depending on your canon, is on. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Um, they also have the get your dirty paws off me, you damn dirty ape. Or... I always remember goddamn being in there somewhere, yeah. but I think um, I infused that myself. And that's a, that's a cute little kitschy line. And you also get the beginning of the apes talking, which... Watching it to watching it today mm-hmm. felt a little bit cheesier than in the theater because oh, in really? the theater I shit a brick. <laughs> I was terrified. I'm sorry to hear about that. Yeah, no, I think the the voices and everything were handled really yeah. well. I mean, the whole thing I have, you know, this is the the odd part is I was prepared to go into this and. You know, for as much as you and I talk about CG, and I almost feel like I need to apologize every time it even comes up. It is fun for me to watch the best that CG has to offer. Yeah. I'm so into the craft of filmmaking and being interested at how people who know what the fuck they're doing do this, that even if I disagree fundamentally with, uh, UCG, whatever, this, you know, we're going to have a movie entirely focused around these apes. We're going to make them all in CG. That is an artistic decision. I'm signing up to see that. And you know what? That's really interesting to me to watch. All right, here's where technology's sure. brought us up to this point. This is possibly the best looking CG I've ever seen. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's going to not be true six months from no, now or 12 months true. from now or we'll whatever. We'll go back and in when we get to year 13 and we start yeah, right. we start forgetting what films we've done on the show. <laughs> and we do this again. We'll, we'll do we'll do Jurassic Park with Rise of the Planet of the Apes sure. in a CG versus puppets episode. Oh, that'll be good. And Rise of the Planet of the Apes will fail in comparison <laughs> sure. to the dinosaurs in Jurassic park there's something about the imagination of that though that you know i find particularly charming just something about filming those scenes and imagining them without cg right it gets me back in that that thing where i'm thinking about the real people behind Uh the camera and how they're doing this that kind of uh you know re-employing creative problem solving to get a scene done right Instead of just dismissing CG as the lazy crutch, sure. suddenly it became this thing where, okay, our director has said, we're going to use CG for apes. That's cool. How the fuck do we do right. that? This ape is going to swing around the house and we're going to do a long you're take. Follow the camera. Logistically, follow the ape with the how camera? the fuck does that happen? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And so CG's been around long enough that everybody's heard all the qualms about it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think public opinion on it is just mostly that it's shit. Yep. I mean, everybody's pretty much on board that 
it's both accepted and crappy. Yeah. It doesn't age well. And so we're looking at all these new techniques to challenge ourselves. And so here is the best, you know, we have to offer, which is important here because we're following the apes. They are the characters here. Right. Surprise, surprise. James Franco, not really the main character. That was one of the most shocking things to me when I yeah. saw it is not only are you following Andy Serkis ape, uh, Caesar. Yeah. But you care. That you're following sure. Andy Serkis. Sure. You don't for a second go, ah, oh, go back to the humans. I want right. to see what they're doing. You're bored. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You're bored when they're cutting back to James Get Franco out of the humans. and I want Nurse to see. Girlfriend. Yeah. You want to go back and watch Caesar and Maurice. I know all their names. You do. Well, see, that's a testament to this, yeah. right? Well, and you know, some of the younger stuff I'm not as impressed with as when Caesar is Caesar, right? When he's doing that creepy under the brow Kubrick yeah. kind of look, yeah, uh, especially that that uh, when the kids are bringing in the beers, yeah, and stuff, that and he's just um, staring them. It's scary. The thing about that actually is when they first announced Rise of the Planet of the Apes, at least in a really public scale, because you sure. and I find out about movies ten years before they come out, and then they don't come out till twenty years after that, yeah, right? But when they first really announced Rise of the Planet of the Apes, and they first showed the apes it was just a three second clip where caesar follows oh you know what i saw that, that. Guard yeah, with, yeah and that's that was so fucking sure, creepy yeah. well because that's one of the big things is yeah. what are they gonna do about sure. the apes well How they the say they're all look? they're gonna be all cg but they won't look crappy yeah right <laughs> oh i've heard that before right mm -hmm. and they really nailed it i mean the eyes alone are yeah, one of well, the, the eyes is a uh, that's a big plot sure. component, right? That leads into a lot of the science stuff. When uh, bright eyes, precisely, and that has to be a, a focal point too, because there's a little bit of, I mean, when it's all apes talking to each other in sign language, right. you know, you need a lot of visual cues too, and and the fact that the movie ends on a kind of a triumphant note, even though the apes are beating us down and yeah. we know what's to come, yeah. that is uh, again that says, hey. This was a movie where you followed the apes sure. around. You wanted them to win, <laughs> right? Because they're your main characters. But it talks about that science, too. So one of the ways you enticed me into, uh, into watching this on the show, I sure. haven't seen this one right. uh, either today, was by basically telling me the, the thing I had feared. Um, I use you as a barometer a lot of times uh -huh. for when movies do things that scare me yeah. uh, in regards to science or religion, and I think they might make me angry. Right. And as much as I love to challenge myself, something like Planet of the Apes, I could give or take seeing that in a theater, and I didn't think there would be anything to it. And if it was going to fucking bash science, I just didn't give a right. shit. But then to find out it's amazing, yeah. one. And, uh, <laughs> and two... Well, let's talk about the science a little bit. Yeah, well, the whole... I guess we talk about treatment first, yeah. and then kind of what is... How does the movie tackle science, <laughs> and then what is it saying about man playing God, or what have you? The whole brilliance of Rise of the Planet of the Apes is in the initial rationale sure. for why the apes have become intelligent. Okay. And it's simple, and it's brilliant in its purity... And it's that nuclear war, right? That government also. experiment, government experiment. Uh, no, no, not none a, of that. Not a government. Experiment. No, there's a scientist whose father has Alzheimer's. Okay. So he discovers a cure for Alzheimer's, tests it on a chimpanzee and the nature of the virus strain that they use is such that it recreates brain synapses and recreates brain cells and nervous tissue. Mm -hmm. And then the ape that they tested on has a baby without Alzheimer's. Right. And that begins to create a super intelligent species of ape. Under the heading of Big Pharma. Sure. Why not? I'll take yeah. Big Pharma. That's fine. We got to have a villain somewhere, right? <laughs> That's true. Okay, fine. Big Pharma. <laughs> no, but you're right. I mean, the, when they're explaining neurogenesis... Yeah. I have to imagine that it's a film, so the science is, sure. uh, let's say, sketchy. Yeah. But I don't feel like they're just bullshitting me. Right. That's how I usually feel when films are trying to do sciencey chat. Mm -hmm. They're saying, uh, well, you know, the tissue does something with the chemicals and the vaccines cause autism. All right, moving on. <laughs> it's just like, God damn it, movie. Don't fucking insult me. 
And so this is really throughout the movie. They talk on a level uh, where the science isn't mentioned a lot, but when it is, I don't feel like I'm really even giving it a suspension of disbelief. Right. I feel like what they're telling me is, hey, we found a, a chemical or a, a, yeah. a virus that can regrow brain tissue. Sure. So all you have to believe is that that exists. Right. There's no scientific mumbo jumbo here. This is, they're just telling you what they have. They're breaking it down pretty easy for you. The only other, I guess, pill that might be tough to swallow if you're really being picky is that apes have a better immune system than people. They don't even have to have a better one so much as a different one. That's true, yeah. That's why you always hear about, you know, we cured AIDS and mice. Hooray, every six months yeah. we're curing AIDS and mice. People still have AIDS. <laughs> you know, we're built differently. We do these uh, these tests on animals and, oh wait, isn't this the part where we're supposed to get into how testing on animals is inherently wrong and science they is evil? They don't test on animals or CG. Man shouldn't play God. CG animals. I'm so happy that this isn't just a, you know, I always thought that Planet of the Apes was a story about how we shouldn't be cruel to the animals yeah. or how the apes fight back or they put us in cages or... How does it feel? How, how does, does it, it feel, feel when you're on the other side of the bars? Yeah, precisely. This is a movie where they wouldn't kill that baby ape out of compassion. Yeah. It was compassion that started the rise sure. right yeah i mean it was the fact that we didn't want to cage the little ape or yeah. that we wouldn't euthanize it i mean who has the heart besides myself to save humanity by euthanizing a sure. tiny tiny ape well and it's also it's not just that the apes got smarter it's also that we accidentally poisoned ourselves well that too, and yeah. created a global pandemic based on the stronger strain of the same virus sure and that's how people died apes didn't even kill everybody no it's, no they there's didn't. really no bad guy <laughs> no people made a mistake fortunately mm. for us apes survived right the best we can hope for is that the apes will re-evolve back into people sure and we'll get to you know continue on our merry motherfucking way that we will branch back from a common and that they will become the common ancestor yeah. i guess between future apes and once again humans bizarre yeah highly likely that's gonna happen the other options mark Wahlberg. oh god never mind the other thing I like is that we don't blame science for the apes getting smarter and overthrowing the humans, right. but we also don't blame science for the conflict between the apes and the humans. This seems a lot more like a war between factions. It's not unlike any war between class or religion or any kind of tribe, right? Yeah. It's just that the apes got smarter and they became another thing to compete with us. Sure. Just like if a, if a fucking continent sprang up out of the ocean, they might have regional conflicts with whoever they sprang up by. Yeah. All of a sudden, a race of apes becomes really smart. There's a class struggle there. Sure. And so we go to war. And that makes sense to me. That makes sense. And it also, I mean, I'll, we did the other Planet of the Apes. Yeah. I'll swallow a story about science, blah, blah, evil. That's fine. But this is way more interesting yeah, to me. It's totally. so creative. It's just, oh, apes want the rights that people have sure. and apes people want are freedom probably hesitant to give right? them that because we are used to putting them in cages because yeah. that made sense before they were smart yeah no one's doing anything wrong yeah. we're all doing the right thing i mean the film goes to show why apes need to be in cages yep. caesar eats a man's finger <laughs> right but then right. he won't let buck kill the cop well that's another great point is that when the killing starts they make a point to say they learn that from us you know, Caesar learned his restraint the hard way. He did his time. Right. He spent time sure. in ape jail. And he reformed. He did. <laughs> and he tries to get the others not to kill the humans. But this is just what happens when you have warring factions and things get out of control. So it's a story about the apes and the humans finding themselves in conflict, not because of anything man inherently did wrong, but stuff got kind of fucked up, right. and there were some really angry apes and some pretty angry humans. And, and... unfortunately, no one had planned for the situation. <laughs> well, yeah, it turns out we didn't really know this was coming, and so War of the Apes. I'm really glad that we not only got a sci-fi day in on Double Feature, oh, but also a happens. brand new film day on Double Feature. Right. Uh, two things we uh, 
Yeah, brand new sci-fi films. When yeah. does that even happen? Yeah, exactly. First of all, hey, two sci-fi films yeah. that are relatively new, and we could talk about them on the show. I feel really accomplished. Uh, we have a website, doublefeatureshow.com. There's stuff on the website, the old Planet sure. of the Apes, good old Charlton Heston, Planet of the Apes. If you want to go and look at Edgar Wright, who we mentioned back Ooh, in the Attack the one. Block, we yeah, have yeah. the uh, little director's menu yeah, on the side. Yeah, we purposefully avoided a lot of that stuff because this isn't an Edgar Wright movie, and <laughs> we have plenty of those on the show. Doublefeatureshow at gmail.com for telling us about medicine in Europe and whatever other bizarre <laughs> trivia you want to send right on over. <laughs> Uh, your take on science and apes and, you know, a lot of people will listen to the show and uh, I make these offhanded remarks about people shouting at the Zunes or whatever I'm making terrible jokes about at the... Whomever let's call them, you choose to alienate at the time. Yeah, let's call them non-jokes uh-huh. because they don't have a punchline nor are they funny. If you feel like you have something to say, we got something wrong, you strongly disagree, you think we're awesome, whatever you want to tell us, preferably the last one, Double feature show at gmail.com. We want to hear that stuff. We have a thing on the internet and a large reason we don't just let it sit on a hard drive somewhere and bother to actually put it on the internet is so other people can hear it because we might be kind of curious what those people think. It's good to have a little feedback. Speaking of feedback. Oh we're, no, uh, it's that time again, it isn't is it? It is that time again. Okay. So we've constantly been asking for your feedback on this always welcome this Keep journey this it. project we're gonna reevaluate at the end of the year and figure out how this went but next week is another chapter in the exciting rocky asia series wave three the <laughs> yeah. final we're the finally, final in the trilogy that's not right yeah. there's six of these fucking it's, things well basically what's happening here is we did the first one which is the 70s version of Rocky, we're just going straight through. Uh, There's really no special thing. We're going to do Rocky V. Original Rocky stuff and uh, old pre-Kill Bill. And then we had... The Kill Bill, which drew from the pre-Kill Bill. And middle Rocky stuff. Right. And now we're doing the latter two Rocky films. Future Rocky, Rocky in space. And then we're going to... That's not true. We're going to take my favorite part of the entire journey, which is Asia's response to Kill Bill. So perfect. So we're going to do... What's Asia going to do now that Kill Bill has come out? They're going to make some extreme movies. Yeah. And I haven't seen anything from this genre, and I am so fucking excited about it. And you haven't seen Rocky. I haven't seen Rocky. You're going to get to some epic conclusion of Rocky. So... Uh, this might be a good time to mention this, and I'm sure we'll talk about it again next week. I have not seen the final Rocky film. Rocky Balboa. I've been saving the sixth Rocky film. We're not going to do it next time. We're going to do it at the end of the year. We're doing Rocky Five next time. Next time we're doing Rocky Five, which is the last Rocky film I have seen. I stopped at that point once I realized we were doing them on the mm-hmm. show so that I could uh, have a nice little surprise right with you at the end. All right. So we're going to do the fifth Rocky movie, and we are going to do Machine Girl. Oh, the Machine Girl. Yes, it's going to be great. Watch more fucking film. Bye.